Oh, what a wonder I see Rainbow shines through my window The Lord loves me The Lord loves me Oh, what a wonder I see Shines through my window, the Lord loves me. He died for me on the cross of Calvary. He bore my sin and my shame and he died for me. He died for me. Calvary. He bore my sin and my shame and he died for me. He rose from the dead, fulfilling each promise he said. And someday, home to my Savior, I shall be led and someday home to my Savior I shall be led all right so that shows the Christians hope in Christ let us go to the Wait a second, please. Let me just zoom in. Home. And okay. Home. Share screen. Share. All right. So it's a song. I will dance. I will sing. To be mad for my king. Nothing, Lord, is hindering. The passion in my soul. I will dance, I will sing to be mad for my king. Nothing, Lord, is hindering passion in my soul. I will dance, I will sing to be mad for my king. Nothing, Lord, is hindering passion in my soul And I'll become even more undignified than this Some may say it's foolishness, but I'll become even more undignified than this Lay my pride by my side and I'll become even more undignified than this Na 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 na, hey! Na 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 na, na 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 na, hey! Na 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 na. I will dance, I will sing, to be mad for my king. Nothing, Lord, is hindering passion in my soul. I will dance, I will sing, to be mad for my king. Nothing, Lord, is hindering. Passion in my soul And I become Even more undignified than this Some would say it's foolishness And I become Even more undignified than this Lay my pride by my side And I'll become Even more undignified than this Na 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 na, hey! Na 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 na, na 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 na, hey! Na 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 na, na 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 na, hey! Na 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 na. All right, this has to do with David's dance and how his uh, wife Michal actually criticized him for behaving like a fool in front of the servants. 
and uh, david was so passionate and david was so caught up with the uh, worship of the lord that he did not care about how his clothing was and that is where the difference between david and michal is so pronounced and uh, david actually pronounced a curse on michal because she was not able to see the worth of his worship all right let's sing the song this is the air i breathe your holy presence this is the air i breathe this is the air i breathe your holy presence living in me this is my daily bread this is my daily bread your very word spoken And I I'm desperate for you And I I'm lost without you This is the air I breathe is the air i breathe your holy presence living in me this is my daily bread this is my daily bread your very spoken to me and I I'm desperate for you and I I'm lost without you and I, I'm desperate for you and I, I'm lost without you lost without you shall we pray merciful father as we come to your throne this evening help us to know how lost we are without you how empty we are without your word how hopeless we are without the lord's second coming as a reality in our lives and how desperate we are if we don't hear the holy spirit communicating the word to us we need you this evening we are hungry for your word we thirst for your presence and father we cannot leave this place without you give us this desire give us this passion to seek after you with all our heart with all our understanding with all our mind with all our strength that we may not be satisfied with anything less than you o lord father we give you all thanks and praise we worship you this evening for who you are in jesus name we pray amen all right so welcome back to the study of genesis 
we are still in chapter 1. Okay, I, I told you to read chapter 2 and come. And I'm sure you would have read, read that. But then <coughs> I want to just go back, trace a few more steps behind us so that we would be a little more clear on the doctrine of man's creation. Yeah, we are going to look at it in chapter 2 in detail. But then what all we did as a summary, okay? The creation of man that we did, uh, we want to just do it a little more stressed out, a little more stretched out uh, so that we get in detail all that we said last week. In case I have missed something, you can add to it uh, in your notes today. If I have missed something last week, you can add to it today, right? That's the reason for this. So this is um, last week we did day number six. And uh, today we are going to do creation of man part one. Okay, we'll do the second part next week. That is from chapter two. Right, let's look at chapter one. And I'm going to retrace my step two, verse 26. Because this requires a little bit more attention. Some more clarity, okay? So let's look at the points. First of all, Genesis chapter one, verse 26 to 31. This is what we are doing it again. Okay, we are redoing the part. Just to highlight on some points, I might add to some points of last week. I might not say some of the points last week's, but that's okay. You get the complete picture if you have attended last week's and this week's session. Okay, here we go. Verse 26, then God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over the livestock and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. All right, so when you look at this passage, we know that God pre-planned the creation of man. God pre-planned the creation of man. And we also stressed last week on, let us make man in our image. Okay, let us make man in our image. The plural usage of us, okay, and our actually shows one God in Three persons. It is indicative of the triune God or the Trinity, as we call it. The word Trinity is not there in the Bible, but the 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 concept of Trinity is presented, is revealed in the Bible, and this is one of the passages that does that. Okay, the plural of us and our one God in three persons. Now, last week we said it cannot be the plurality of royalty. He wants to give respect to himself. But, uh, you know, the Bible is not speaking in that kind of respect. It cannot be the plurality of royalty. Why? God does not speak too highly of himself. You know? God is not pompous. God is not a show-off. And he does not use that in connection with himself. Because he's not, uh, you know, referring to royalty there. Now, the other verbs along with the passage is in singular, make, man, you know, all those things, all those other words. If uh, it is the Hebrew, uh, you know, uh, grammar, then all the other words also should be plural. But here all the other verbs are in singular, not in plural, which shows that three God functioning as one. Okay, then. He cannot be speaking to angels because last week we said angels are nowhere in context. In any of this passage, they have no mention of angels. Okay, So, uh, purposely they have been kept out of it so that they, none of the Israelites would resort to worshipping of angels. There will be no confusion with it, whether God is conversing to angels or he is in consultation with them. No, there is no mention of angels anywhere in this passage so that that is totally out of the context. Okay. So let us make God in our image. So he consulted with himself. It was a plan with among Godhead that they create man. Second part, in our image. Okay. Now, somebody said that our own understanding of ourselves begins with the knowledge of who created us and for what purpose. Our own understanding of ourselves begins with the knowledge of who created us, how and for what purpose. Okay, So, when we look at this passage, it's a clear understanding about who created us. The triune God who created the heavens and the earth has created us, you and me. Second part, uh, 
uh, how did he create us the detail is given there towards the end and in chapter 2 again and why the purpose is also given in this passage we'll look at it in detail okay now what does this passage tell you six days of creation and on the sixth day after he creates animals now he's talking about the creation of man and he says let us make man in our image in our after our likeness and let them have dominion so it means there is an unbridgeable gap between man and animals okay biologically some of the animals may look similar to us in appearance outward appearance right but we are distinct in our moral intellectual and spiritual capabilities we are distinct in our moral intellectual and spiritual capabilities okay it also shows that there is an unbridgeable gap between the angelic life okay between the angels and man nowhere does the bible tells us that angels were created in the likeness and image of god angels cannot have the same kind of relationship of love and fellowship that we have with god angels can't have that okay so there is an unbridgeable gap between the angels and us it also means that the incarnation of jesus becoming man was definitely a possibility why because we are created in god's image you see so the second person of the trinity when he had to come and become man god already left that possibility open he could really become one of us because deity and humanity are two different things the divine and the physical are two different things but they are somehow compatible in creation itself god made it somehow compatible deity could enter into humanity okay so that is why it has been left uh, you know uh, open there why because god had to become man sometime in history and that possibility was left open for god okay then uh, i said about personality right the uh, moral intellectual and spiritual capabilities what is what is the meaning of personality what is the meaning of morality and what is the meaning of spirituality personality has three distinct uh, divisions personality means i have complete knowledge brain intellect thinking you no know, uh, accumulation of knowledge information processing it plus i have feelings emotional feelings i feel anger uh, you know rage love compassion all those things i feel feelings and then i have will decision making power i can do and decide to do i can do things like how god decides and do, does things i can have my own wishes i can have my own likes and dislikes see so personality means i have knowledge feelings and will and what is morality morality means able to make moral judgments between right and wrong able to make moral judgments between right and wrong tetum seriyum viveji cheriyanulla shakti that is morality so god has also given us a conscience like a security guard which warns us of approaching enemy alle nammada compromise okka varunnundengil namukku temptation varunnundengil nammala warn cheyanayittu oru sentry avadu vechittundu oru guard avadu vechittundu and that is conscience so a personality shows that we have knowledge we have the ability for feelings and we have free will morality shows us that we are able to make moral judgments and also have a conscience so what is spirituality spirituality shows that we are made for communion with god on the level of spirit we communicate with god you no know? man has this unique ability to seek after god to search for god to have a communication with him to speak to him in prayer and to listen to his voice through the word of god now what does it not mean no there are many many unique things about man that animals don't have like for example i will say a simple thing naana varumbo nammala blush you know we become red in our cheeks and all animals don't blush our faces are always you know it can be lifted towards heaven we can pray we can you know look towards heaven but animals don't do that 
they depend on their instincts we depend on our spiritual connection with god that is what prayer is all about right so what does it not mean when it says god created man in his own image in his image he created him what does it not mean it does not mean that man and god we have the same kind of physical body no man has a physical body but god does not have a physical body like you and i have he does not have a nose like you he does not have eyes like you he does not have hair like you he is not at all like you why turn with me to john chapter 4 and verse 24 jesus reveals that to us john chapter 4 verse 24 says he is telling the uh, samaritan woman at the well he is saying god is spirit and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth see understand this basic concept that god has no body he is a spirit being and we are a human being which means we have flesh adam means from dust okay the word adam means from dust mankind has come from dust god is spirit he does not have a body like you and me so though he has no physical body what does he mean by image then he designed man's body to do many of the things which god alone can okay i'll tell you again though he does not have a physical body he designed the human body in such a way that we can do a lot of things that god does for example we can see hear smell touch senses plus we can speak think plan etc okay so just like how god sees god listens to our prayers god says it is a pleasing aroma to me god touches the lives of people god speaks and things happen god thinks about it god plans well in advance same way man is given all these abilities by god in his physical form okay so when god was going to put the spirit of man into man he was going to breathe into his nostrils and give him life at the time when the spirit of man was going to be accommodated the body was the best container that god could ever make the physical body was the best container which can hold man's spirit okay so this is a special creation the body that you have is special it is unique we know that our fingerprints are unique our uh, retinas are unique every genetic detail that you have is different from any tom dick and harry a b or c you know none of us are same throughout history if you look back you will not find another person like you and that's what makes your body exclusive okay you're one of the finest designs that god has ever brought forth yeah. and you are only one you're only one there are no seven like you there are no nine like you there are no 20 like you there is only one like you that's what it means okay so this is the best container that god could ever have designed for your spirit which is inside you now what is more important is the body more important or is the soul more important or the spirit more important spirit is the god breathed element in you and after death ecclesiastes says the spirit leaves man then it goes back to god what happens to the body it becomes an external shell no life in it it is just a container it is only a body it is only a shell and so we call it i am mentioned a body eduthu kulichidam ennu parayam so it just becomes a body a shell and it's only a container so we, what do we do we give respects to the container and we bury or or cremate the body right so that is it with the body human body from dust it came and to dust it will return so what happens to the soul soul is the eternal part of man and god desires that the soul would be with god eternally a person who has not understood and submitted himself to the gospel who is not illumined in his mind who has not been born again that soul will be in hell eternally nithyamaya naragathile aa soul pogum okay so this is what the three components of man's body is 
man has a human body man has a soul a living soul the personality in the soul only these three things are contained personality morality and the third one is spirituality it's contained in the spirit through the spirit of man we communicate to the spirit of god okay so that radar that antenna is given to us and we have to seek after god okay now wherever you go wherever you go in, the, in on planet earth you will find people groups isolated people groups even in africa when you go into the deepest of jungles you will find people groups who are still seeking for something to worship see man has been designed that way to seek after an object of worship and we will never be satisfied until we fill that vacuum that is within us with the true and living god now let's look at the next things what this image and likeness represents image and likeness are two different terms we saw that last week image has to do with appearance and likeness has to do with abstract similarity I'll say it again image has to do with appearance and likeness has to do with abstract similarity okay for example i behave like my father i have mannerisms like my father now how did it come it came by acquaintance it games by parijam a vyakti ot eda palagunnond undu varunana likeness appearance has to do with image okay so image and likeness two different words that are used in the bible and uh, what does it mean almost similar meaning are but what it means is something slightly different one comes by by just giving it to him he got it but the other one he has to nurture it cu- cultivate it over a period of time and how is god going to do that the likeness would be brought into man by constant association when the lord walked with him in the garden when the wa- god talked with him in the garden associated with him god wanted the likely the likeness of god to be found in man christ likeness we are to be in christ's likeness okay so how does it come when a christian associates himself with christ constantly walks and obeys the word of god then he becomes christ like it's a process so the process had to start somewhere and that is where the image starts okay image already given so that we would walk in likeness then let them have dominion see now first of all we should understand that man was created last of all correct after all creation was over then the last creation was man so what does that show you it shows you that we are the last but not the least okay so it should keep us humble that we are the last of creation so it keeps us in our position we are not the first creation we are not the first borns okay we are the last so all other things were cre- given priority before man was created so the universe doesn't revolve around man it revolves around him and we are just the last ones uh, being created on this planet okay so that gives us our humility but the second part is our prominence in the order of creation cannot be denied why because god gave us the dominion god wanted us to have the dominion he planned for a man to have the dominion see so we have the ability to affect our environment we have the ability to be be leaders among the creation how was that possible god gave it to us it was gifted to us it was a god given ability for man okay so let them have dominion so we are created according to plan again the bible reaffirms that verse 27 so god created man in his own image in the image of god he created him male and female he created him okay what is male and female he created him it does that mean that aanum pennum adangi oru creation ayirunno aadyam devam create cheyathu like man has you know both sex organs uh, we call it the androgynous being or no no uh, both male and female was not in this you know exhibited in the same body uh, the, this is only an overview of chapter 2 okay chapter 2 we go into detail on creation but here it uh, it gives you an understanding that god was the god who created both male and female and both male and female are created in his image okay that is what it means so both are created by god and both are created uh, by in, in his image okay so individually the facts of creation holds true for man 
as it holds true for women also they are not inferior in any way they are not superior in any way equal that's how god has created them now in our day people would say there is no real difference okay this may be true if it is if you are uh, if you believe in um, uh, evolution you know evolution believes in this kind of accidents you know mutation and all those things to god the difference between man and woman is not accidental it is planned okay difference is there god has made it and it is meaningful it is purposeful men are not women and women are not men okay it is the it is the depravity of our culture that brings this gender confusion le in the moonu kolam undu fill up cheyanayittu nammal ippam railway ticket book cheyan povanengile what is your gender male female other see god did not create male female and other god created male and female he created them okay so there is only man and woman there is no third gender if there is a third gender then that is because of the cultural depravity that man is going through right now okay now many people wonder this is woman superior or is man superior and th- some people even accuse the bible of saying that bible has created man as superior no bible does not say that when god created it says male and female he created them now what does it mean i would say it like this a man is absolutely superior at being a man and a woman is absolutely superior at being a woman okay i'll say it again a man is absolutely superior at being a man oru purushan aavan oru purushane kaal yogyanayavan vera thunnilla oru stree aagan streeye kaal yogyayada vera aaru illa only a woman can be as superior to being a woman and a man can be absolutely superior at being a man okay but when a man tries to be a woman or a woman tries to be a man then we have something which is inferior okay i'll say it again when a man tries to be a woman or a woman tries to be a man that is when we end up with something inferior otherwise a man is absolutely superior at being a man and a woman is absolutely superior at being a woman okay then it says and god blessed them see without the goodness of god's blessing human life would be impossible okay namaku aalogyam polum mattathilla it is impossible man cannot live on this earth and do the things that are purposed of him without god's blessing aanane aaninde rolum pennine penninde rolum cheyanavengil devathinte anugraham undavanam and god blessed them see now human life would be unbearable if we don't have god's blessing also see jeevitham naragavum if you don't have god's blessing if god did not bless us life would be unbearable if god did not bless us life would be impossible okay so we, if people are bemoaning and saying oh ende jeevitham oru duridhamana ennu parayunnathond what does it mean it means that they are not blessed by god but the bible says we are blessed people god has blessed us now let's look at the pronounced blessings first of all be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish and the sea uh, fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over every living thing that moves on the earth okay be fruitful and multiply now we know that this is a this is in context to man only okay uh, the first uh, generation of man now what does it say be fruitful and multiply so how does man be fruitful and multiply of course sexual intercourse right primary reason for god creating sex was not to contribute to population to filling okay it was one of the means that god was going to use okay sex would be used for multiplying and filling or fruit being fruitful okay but that is not the only reason why sex was given 
we know that right because jesus himself says later on you would find it way ahead in chapter 2 when we are looking at that passage we'll go into that in detail it says a uh, verse 23 the man said this at last is born of my bones flesh of my flesh she shall be called woman because she was taken out of man therefore a man shall leave his wife father and his mother and hold fast to his wife and they shall become one flesh that's a purpose that is the purpose of sex within marriage one flesh bonding in relationship that was god's primary aim for creating sex but sex would also contribute in being fruitful and multiplying understand that animals also have sexual intercourse what do they have sexual intercourse for only for reproduction see but the human sexual response is different from animals that's what the bible is trying to tell us see animals have something called heat season okay our season lana our reproduction uh, you know they they want they look forward to reproduction and sexual activity okay that is only that period maybe two months of the year or four months of the year that is the only time they are in heat we say that animal is in heat because it is exhibiting sexual properties sexual instincts but humans are constantly available and are interested in sexual activity or the season no illa there is no heat period we are always interested we are always available so only humans have continuous sexual relationship even after fertility you know, among the among all the animals we are the only people who are created by god who exhibit this kind of an attraction not just for fertility not even during fertility even after fertility see so bible says sex is unique it links the partners it fuses them not animals you know you see one dog mating with a dog and then you see the next day that dog mating with another dog no problem with them but uh, humans are not like that we somehow get linked to the other person bible says all other activity all the sin that man commits is outside but this is one sin which he commits against his own why is that because it somehow fuses that person with the other bible says if you are having sex with a prostitute it links you with that person and you have become one flesh there see you become one somehow it fuses us so it is more than just physical relationship it is much deeper than that it goes into an emotional spiritual level that is why it connects us more deeply so man is not supposed to have multiple partners for adam only eve was created only eve was created okay yeah we'll come to that in the next chapter but let's just get that as a background then diet verse 29 says behold i have given you and god said behold i have given you every plant yielding seed that is on the face of all the earth and every tree with seed in its fruit you shall have them for food so initially man was created as a vegetarian okay but thank god god knew that we would slowly become carnivores that is why when god designed us he gave us the canines you see and even those animals which are prone to be carnivores later on god gave them canines even before that canines did not develop over time did not come through evolution god designed it that way because he knew this is only a stage in man's life okay so please don't take these out of context and say okay god designed us to be vegetarian so i'm going to be vegetarian from now on no god does not say that at all it was to adam and eve at that point of time that god told them to be vegetarian now when did he say don't be a vegetarian genesis chapter 9 Genesis chapter 9 you can underline the passage if you are doubtful on that right Genesis chapter 9 verse 3 every moving thing that lives shall be food for you as i and as i gave you the green plants i give you everything amazing no? so every living thing is an anim- whatever animal it is if it's moving it can eat it that's what god said okay so that is after the flood before the flood you are supposed to eat only vegetarian that's how god planned it to happen and not only human beings but also verse 30 and to every beast of the earth and to every bird of the heavens and to everything that creeps on the earth 
everything that has the breath of life i have given every green plant for food so even the creatures were vegetarian imagine a lion eating grass yeah. so they are all designed as vegetarians we are also designed originally as vegetarians now the last verse and god saw everything that he had made and behold it was very good and there was ev- evening and there was morning the sixth day okay so god saw that everything was good everything was no he added to that everything was very good now there is so much of detail in chapters uh, in on the sixth day there is so much of creation on sixth day so many details and so many types you know animals are created the man is created then so much instruction is given about the sixth day and after d- doing the whole thing he turns around and says it is very good it is very good you know so it shows that there was no death and no decay at that time sin brought in death and decay into our midst okay so so far this is what we saw let's look at the sabbath and we'll end it the first sabbath is mentioned in chapter 2 verse 1 to 3 thus the heavens and the earth were finished and all the host of them and on the seventh day god finished his work that he had done and he rested on the seventh day from all his work that he had done so god blessed the seventh day and made it holy because on it god rested from all his work that he had done in creation see the word sabbath is not found in all the three verses okay if you noticed the word sabbath is not mentioned anywhere here okay but then how do we know it is sabbath okay first of all seventh day of the week is mentioned three times in this passage randamatha vakyathilum moonamatha vakyathilum kuda cherthu uh it is mentioned three times the seventh day of the week the word sabbath in hebrew means to stop from work or to rest okay than cheyidu kondirna pravrutiyil ninnu viramikya allengil visramikya idinana hebrew word sabbath ennu parayunnu okay we call it sabbath in english but sabbath ennana hebrew words so it is related to the word seven in the hebrew uh, you know number numbering so sabbath is related to the word number seven uh, and then sabbath is uh, the meaning of the word sabbath is to cease working or to rest and from there only they have taken this word sabbath okay now there are three different sabbaths mentioned in the bible we'll stop with that okay what are the three different sabbaths mentioned in the bible first is the national sabbath of israel where does it come exodus chapter 16 purapada pustakam 16th adhyayam exodus chapter 16 and verse 23 <coughs> right it says he said to them this is what the lord has commanded tomorrow is a day of solemn rest a holy sabbath to the lord bake what you will bake and boil what you will boil and all that is left over lay aside to be kept till the morning see verse 25 moses said eat it today for today is a sabbath to the lord today you will not find it in the field it with, with regard to manna manna and the and the quail okay now what was happening god was saying you can work cook it before the sabbath don't no cooking on that day but you can eat it on that day okay no going out to collect these things on sabbath day it won't come there but this is when the sabbath is supposed to be kept by the israelite okay now what does it show you it shows that israel already knew about something called the sabbath because no explanation is given about the sabbath there turn with me to exodus chapter 20 where the 10 commandments are given was 8 to 11 remember the sabbath day to keep it holy six days you shall labor and do all your work but the seventh day is a sabbath to the lord your god on it you shall not do any work you or your son or your daughter your male servant or your female servant or your livestock or the sojourner who is within your gates for in six days the lord made heaven and earth the sea and all that is in them and rested on the seventh day 
therefore the lord blessed the sabbath and made it holy so you see moses is explaining to them about how to keep the sabbath and why the importance is there why because he is connecting it with creation see so already the jews knew about something called the sabbath and now it was being made into a law so that they would keep it but it also means that this sabbath okay it has more more significance than they thought it had okay or yehudam vicharichadinekal kudal importance adine undennullu appa ana avarku manasilayathu because they know about the story of creation and they know that the lord rested on the seventh day but now it was going to be a national rest day for israel it was going to be a national rest day for israel then exodus chapter 31 Exodus chapter 31 was 12 to 17 and the lord said to moses you are to speak to the people of israel and say above all you shall keep my sabbath for this is a sign between me and you throughout your generations that you may know that i the lord sanctify you the lord sanctify you see a sign between jehovah and israel sabbath was a sign between jehovah and israel that the lord had sanctified them they were visuddhigarichu ennulladinte oru adayalamana sabath nu parayunnu see so them honoring the sabbath was a national rest day for them le ellarum ee rat race il odikondirikkana samayathe we are supposed to rest le so that god was showing to them through creation and that is what they had to do now thirdly so national sabbath day it was a sign between israel and jehovah and thirdly you will find it in deuteronomy chapter 5 aavartana pustakam anjam adhyayam 12 mudal 15 12 to 15 deuteronomy chapter 5 verses 12 to 15 says observe the sabbath day to keep it holy as the lord your god commanded you six days you shall labor and do all your work but the seventh day is a sabbath to the lord your god on it shall do no work and you and your son okay now come down verse 15 you shall remember that you were a slave in the land of egypt and the lord your god brought you out from there with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm therefore the lord your god commanded you to keep the sabbath day he was linking what here he is linking deliverance from egypt and sabbath see that so now israel had to remember on the sabbath day that god had delivered them faithfully from egypt see so it was a national sabbath of israel it was a sign between jehovah and israel and it was for them to remember their deliverance from egypt okay this was the first sabbath this was the first time sabbath was mentioned as sabbath in the bible but this we know is not the first sabbath because moses says repeatedly on the seventh day god rested after creation on the seventh day so we come back to the first sabbath which is that chapter genesis chapter 2 verse 1 to 3 see that is the personal sabbath of the lord god does not grow tired by the way of creation and all that you know he gets oh you and all that i want to make you shino angane parayathilla isaiah chapter 40 verse 28 says he never grows weary see isaiah 40 verse 28 bible says he never grows tired he never gets exhausted so why did he have to rest he wanted to show us that the work of creation was finished he had stopped it that's it and he was pleased and satisfied with what he created was chapter 1 verse 31 says he was pleased and satisfied with what he created that was his rest see now three things we observe in this first of all i said last week there is no ending given to the sabbath no evening and morning what which shows that god's sabbath continued he stopped creation that's what it means he did not create after that secondly god didn't bless any other day except for this sabbath day okay he made it a blessing so that by it we would be blessed see so he made it a blessing by blessing it seventh day now after blessing it the bible says something very important there yeah uh, verse 2 and he rested on the seventh day 
verse 3 so god blessed the seventh day and made it holy he sanctified it that's where we get the word holy what does holy mean he set it apart for his own purpose he set that day apart for his own purpose that day belongs to the lord that's what it means okay so he made it holy so god blessed the seventh day and he sanctified it he he made it he set it apart for himself for his own purposes see now when when we run the race you know people say they are crucified all the people who are running the rat right race they are crucified between two thieves who are the thieves the regrets of yesterday one thief and the other one is the worries of tomorrow we are crucified we are stretched between this we are struggling between this regrets of yesterday and the worries of tomorrow innalegal naale chinda bharathile nammal ingane kashtapaduvaanu and god says rest god says rest our bodies need rest our minds need rest spiritually we need this rest to draw closer to god and god was teaching us that you know so that is the first sabbath and the second sabbath first time the sabbath is mentioned is in exodus then the personal sabbath of the lord is genesis chapter 2 and then we have a third sabbath that comes in the new testament for every christian believer it comes very vishwasik endana hebrews chapter 4 verse 1 to 11 hebrews chapter 4 verse 1 to 11 therefore while the promise of entering is rest still stands let us fear lest any of you should seem to have failed to reach it what is he talking about spiritual rest that we have in christ jesus the spiritual rest that a believer can have in christ jesus christu yesu will namaku avagasha petta oru visramate kurichana parayunnu a rest that we will have in christ okay this rest is only for the believer only if you have known christ and come into a relationship with him that is the only time you will have this rest turn with me to colossians chapter 2 and verse 16 colossians chapter 2 and verse 16 therefore lo- let no man pass judgment on you in questions of food and drink or with regard to a festival or a new moon or a sabbath see so in in christ we are free nobody can judge us based on these things on food or drink or festival or new moon or sabbath what is the sabbath for a christian now once you know christ you understand that sabbath is not just one day sabbath is every day god has sanctified every day so on on the first day of the week we meet together because why the lord rose up on the first day the sabbath of the jew was changed and christians started honoring sunday because christ rose on the on on the first day of the week so we meet on all sundays we have fellowship we are strengthened we have communion and then what happens every day sabbath we go and do our work among the pagans among the ones who are living in darkness we have we uphold this communion which we had with the lord and with our fellows with our uh, brothers and sisters we take it into the world and we shine the light upon them and they will be a, and they will glorify your father in heaven you see you see how the sabbath works for a christian now so no man can judge you on basis of food and drink and festival and new moon or even sabbath because we are the ones privileged ones who can enter into this rest in christ this is only for the believers okay have you found your rest in christ Or are you still struggling with the Sabbath? God wants us, each one of us, to find a rest in Christ. Have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Be born again. That is how we enter into the rest that Christ has planned for us. That is His Sabbath. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this evening. We were able to look into detail about why we are created. for what purpose and how we are created help us to understand that we are special we are the only beings who have this capacity to know you 
and to have a relationship with you. Help us, O oh Lord. Help us, O oh Lord, to find this rest in our lives. Not to miss out on this great plan that God has. For each man to enter into the rest that God has planned. Help us not to miss it. Today, let me have a relationship with Christ. When I repent of my sins, and I confess it to the Lord, and I invite him into my heart, he enters into my heart and dwells with me. Then I would really understand what rest is. Then I would be free from the rat race. I'd be free from these bondages that bind me. Then I would be surely free. How Christ intended me to be free. Thank you, O Lord, for your great plan that is at work within us. We give you all praise and all glory. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen.